Christian Coleman in the black in the middle of the track. Next to him, Rogers. Christian Coleman. Christian Coleman all the way. Christian Coleman. And that train is in Call this a preemie. Uh, we go through this routine to kind of get muscle appropriate receptors fire and get him uh, acclimated to what he's about to experience on tomorrow. Um, all the all systems look like they're on go. He's executing well off the block, uh, pushing to set his 30 up. Um, and if we're setting that 30 up, the 60 through 90 is going to take care of itself. So very pleased. He's 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 fast. He's ready. We just got to put it all together and stay in our lane and make it happen. Feel good. It's a good pre meet. Felt pretty fast. A uh, few things to clean up, but should come together tomorrow for a good race. So I'm excited. I don't put numbers on it. I don't put numbers on it. I, again, I just try to keep him within himself, uh, within his lane. And if he can, if he can manage those those two things, then it'll be special. It'll be special. Looking forward to a win, man. Um, you know, on the professional ranks, anytime you're able to come out on top of a world-class field. It's always good, so that's what I'm excited about, trying to get a good win. Um, and whatever time comes with it, it'll take some fast to be able to get the victory, so that's what I'm looking forward to. Normally I would throw my stopwatch when I see Normans, but I ain't throwing my phone. <laughs> He's coming. Oh my God. He's ready. I just be locked in, like I have my headphones on and then I have like my, my work bag with me and I just be feeling like I'm just going to work, you know what I'm saying? Like sometimes I be thinking about like, you know, the NBA players, they walk through the tunnel, they be having their bag, the headphones, like they finna go out there and do work. I just be feeling the same way, like I just, you know, uh, locked in, music playing, you ready to go out there and compete. Starts with uh, Physio and what he's getting right now. I think, um, you know, he's in a good mood, chatting with him earlier. Uh, so he feels pretty good. Um, we'll just proceed through the warm-up, kind of see how he feels as we progress through that. Get our stars, get our fly work. The race day is on. I'm at work and I came here for, for one job and, you know what I'm saying, until that job is over, you know, you can't relax. And so, you know, I was just locked in, me and Coach Hall, you know, just cooking up, just working. Um, and then when it's all over, you know, we can be cool again. But before that, you know, we, we all came here competing for, to try to get the win. If this is good, the rest of it is going to take care of itself. That rapport has to be paramount. You know, he has to trust, he has to believe, he has to have faith in what, we, what, I, what I tell him. Um, my philosophy is I have to get to know the athlete first. Uh, at that point, once we establish that rapport, I can extract what I need to out of him. So our relationship is first and foremost to me. Uh, and that's how I see him. I see him as like my son, you know, so. Um, that's got to be important. We got to be able to laugh, joke, keep the stresses down, so that he can come out and perform. So, yeah, Coach Hall, that's my that's my guy. Um, you know, I mean, he made me who I am. You know, he took an 18 year old kid who still had like a football body and was just trying to figure out track, turned me into an elite collegiate athlete, and then ultimately turned me into the best in the world. You know, in my in my craft, and you know, I give him all the praise for that, man. Um, I think he's the best coach in the world, and I feel like I'm one of the most, most talented athletes in the world. And you know, you combine that, and, and good things happen. So I'm, I'm grateful that he was able to come into my life. It's, it's always good when you have a, a coach that you can talk to about track, but then also relate to about you know other things. And so um, it's definitely a blessing. Harris steps off the track. Christian Coleman, there he is, world number one, three races so far, fabulous form from him in all of them, but he's lost two of them. The Xfinity men's 100 meters. Come on, man. Run his own, run his own. Cisse in one, Tour 2-3, Gillespie 4, Gatling goes in four, 
Coleman in five. Rogers, Hughes, Tracy Burrell. Really good start there from Justin Gatlin, but so does Coleman go away quickly to him. Coleman leading at the moment. This is youth against the older Gatlin, and he's going to win it by half a metre here. The two of them well clear of the rest. Coming through third, I think, was Zarnell Hughes. 9.80. Well, if that's confirmed, let's have a look at the wind speed. Minus 0.1. Boy, oh boy. That's the fastest time in the world this year from Coleman. And that is a very, very impressive win indeed, goodness me. It's confirmed at 981. It is still an improvement on his own world lead of 985. That was in uh, Oslo just over two weeks ago. That's what I told his dad. That's, appreciate it. That's what I told his dad he run. <laughs> I feel good. It's always good to come out here and compete in front of a home crowd. Anytime you're able to, uh, you know, come out on top of a historic uh, field like that, you know, it's good. So I feel good. It's some positives and negatives to take away from it and just, you know, use that to keep building and keep working. Man, that's a, that's a blessing to, to be able to compete at the highest level in a Diamond League event, but to also have my family here to support and um, cheer me on and to know they're watching, you know, that gives me a boost of, of, of motivation because um, I want to put on a good show for them. You know, I want to go out there and compete and win for myself, but when you got them in the crowd watching and cheering me on, you know, I know I want to put on a good show for them. So it's a blessing to have them here in, in my life. I'm pretty sure a lot of elite athletes have competed here before. Um, you know, Stanford has, has hosted a couple of, of big time meets. And for me to have the facility record, um, you know, that, that's, that's, that's pretty cool. You know, that's just one of the things that you just add to the list of things just, and then you just put your head down and just keep on working. And I knew it was going to take something fast to come out on top of that field. And so um, I was happy to just be able to come out here and compete and um, to have a facility record. Uh, you know, it's pretty good.